Ground control to Major Tom. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. <laughs> this is Edward Pivos for MLive, and this is awesome. We are at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, and we are giving you a sneak peek of the brand new Apollo exhibition, which opens Saturday. Again, this opens Saturday here at the Henry Ford in Dearborn. So we're gonna explore space. I'm on a um, replica of a, you know, a moon car. <laughs> What's it called again? Lunar Rover. Lunar Rover, yes, okay. So let's bring in Kate from the Henry Ford. Um, this is really cool. So. This open Saturday, this is free with admission yes. to the Henry Ford. That's right, yeah. And real quick, so we're like at the end of the exhibition right now, we're right? We're at the end because this is a really neat photo op. This is a replica of the Apollo 17 lunar rover. 17 was the last Apollo mission. 11 was the first one that landed on the moon. Um, but 15, 16, and 17 had a moon car, as you said, um, so that it could extend the range that the astronauts were able to travel as they were taking samples on the moon. Yeah, this is great. Well, there you go. Let's explore space. Let's, let's see what we have here at this uh, exhibition again, which opens Saturday at the Henry Ford in Dearborn, and it runs through... May 8th. May 8th. So you have plenty of time, but not really, because May 8th is going to be here real quick. Sure will. It's only a couple months. So let's sneak on over here. I don't know, stop me if I'm missing something, because okay. there's so um, much stuff. Well, in this area, like I said, this is the end of the exhibit. So these cases in the center um, are some models. Some of them you may be familiar with. We have the Space Shuttle, of course, uh, and then the International Space Station. So these are models of the Space Shuttle yeah. International Space Station, yep. Now... How big in real life is that? Like, is, it's like That's a size a of like a, like a cruise ship, it's, I guess. It's or like, um, well, I think we've seen the, all seen the pictures of it landing on a huge. runway. So kind of like a, like a jet, about that size. Space station, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. Can and you imagine going up on the space station? I'm, I'd be blown away oh, just being up so there. Fun. So cool. I would love to go. What is this? Uh, this is a model. Some of these were, um, were ideas that the designers had um, of rockets or um, oh it's like for Mars vehicles. it's like a, a yeah, prototype of yeah. something to go on Mars mm -hmm. okay there was so much work done on space leading up to Apollo 11 that there's all of this great material culture of ideas that um, that people had and models of that we also have the other later Apollo missions in in this area so maybe you've seen the Apollo 13 film so we have some artifacts from that uh, as well as 12 and then um, even the later ones after that. So which one is Tom Hanks there? Oh, I mean the yeah. picture went away, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is amazing. So let's walk over here. We have some really cool items here. Yeah. Um, oh, the lunar surface, the lunar surface. lunar surface. So if you, if you want to step on there, you should be able to make some tracks on the moon. Go ahead and step on it. There we go. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. It feel like you are on the moon. That's really cool. For each of these missions, there were only two astronauts who went on the moon, so obviously a very rare experience. That's really neat. They on the footprints, and then they disappear. So. Yep. Yep. All right, so right here. This, this is, we're moving in backwards in history to Apollo 11. This is a leg from um, the lunar module, and it's one of several that were built for everything that went to the moon, there were many more models and um, and uh, replicas, if you will, um, because they had to test everything here on Earth. Um, and this, as of the original one, um, is actually still on the moon because the bottom part of the lunar modules stayed on the moon. Weight is a huge factor in space travel, so only what actually needed to leave the moon in order to get the astronauts back to the command module, which was in lunar orbit, uh, would, would go up. Everything else is left there um, on the moon. So it's kind of a professional dream of mine. Maybe someday I could run the moon museum on the moon yeah, of all of the lunar equipment. Tons of equipment still on the uh -huh. moon, including a lot of those vehicles, like we were yeah. just saying, they're still yeah. on the moon too. So, oh my gosh. So if you're just joining us, we're at the Henry Ford in Dearborn for the new Apollo exhibition, which opens on Saturday, runs through May 8th. 8th, and it's free with admission to the museum, okay? So 
you don't have to pay extra for this. And the gift shop at the end, cool stuff. Mm -hmm. You have to always check that. You always have to exit through the gift exit shop. Exit through the gift shop. <laughs> Astronaut ice cream is one of the oh, most they're... popular museum gift shop items. So we've got astronaut ice cream, yes. bananas, and strawberries. I had that as a kid. It, it tasted okay. I wonder if it's improved since. You know, We're it, talking 40 years ago. I used to eat that as a kid. It, it was... tasted better as a kid. <laughs> I'll have to try it. Yeah. I'll have to see. That's so funny. Um, so what is at this exhibit? We have, there's, there's, there's replicas, there's, um, you know, there's real items too, yeah, right? Because like I said, a lot's left in space, but there's a lot that there's wasn't. A lot that's, let's that's take, let's take a look at some, okay, they're like costumes and yeah, probably. Yeah, here, let's look at these hands. Suits. Yeah. Oh, the hands, okay, what do we got here? Um, so there was such precision nope. in um, how every part of a spacesuit would fit the astronaut. These are casts of the Apollo 11 crew's hands, hmm. um, and their gloves would be custom fitted for each astronaut. One detail that's really neat, if you look at Michael Collins' hands over to the left, you'll see he was wearing his wedding ring, oh, um, yeah. and he had to then wear his wedding ring on the mission because that's how it was when they made the, the gloves. That's fascinating. That's really neat. You yeah. never think about something so simple yet makes so much sense yeah. that everything has to be so precise and fitting. Um, Here's another great one over here. Um, the A7L spacesuits were the type of spacesuit that the Apollo astronauts wore. Uh, this one was from um, Don Lind, who um, he, he was an astronaut not on the Apollo 11 mission, um, but this is the same spacesuit and it is original. Um, and it's called a personal spacecraft because it had to have all of those life sustaining and communications functions of a full spacecraft, but in a personalized form. Wow. Looks like it's been through a little bit. <laughs> Wow, very neat. Okay, and so we got some original uh, newspapers yeah, here of uh, men walking on the moon. And I don't think we can underestimate the excitement over Apollo 11 for the American public. Um, a majority of Americans who had televisions were watching the landing, even though it was it was later at night. Um, we had really worked up to that point in our history over the course of the past decade, and it was just such a culmination um, of all of our, our hopes and dreams. Yeah. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, July 21st, 1969. Wow. All right, let's continue. This is, uh, we're going in reverse again at the uh, Henry Ford Dearborn. This opens Saturday, the brand new Apollo exhibition. Where do a lot of these... Uh, items come from? Uh, where where did this exhibit yeah. come from or originate from? Uh, this originated from the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. If you're familiar with Space Camp, um, that's where Space Camp is. I remember located. Space Camp the movie uh, from the 80s, oh, yeah. I believe. <laughs> I, I remember the commercials for it on, on TV. Um, so that was the, uh, the center of where the rockets were created by NASA for the space program. Um, and then they created a visitor center and a museum there too. So there are partners in this. Um, and then Flying Fish Exhibitions tours this around the country. So it's been touring for a couple of years now and we're really happy to have it. Um, over here we have uh, helmets and the three parts of the helmet that were needed to So this is one safe. helmet but three different yes, parts. three different parts okay. of it that would all come together on the left is the sun visor to, to keep those sun's rays away, the ah. bubble helmet um, necessary for, you know, um, breathing, and then um, the, the top part of it to oh, kind yeah. of hold it all together. And, and there's keep a the safe. picture of it all put together there, all three pieces. Wow, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I, I'm, I can't take my eyes off these models over here. Can we step over here? Sure. This is really yeah. cool. Let's go over on this side. Okay. Uh, educational about um, about early space flight because people hear Apollo this and Friendship 7 and Gemini Project and putting that all together um, was all towards one goal of getting people into space. Um, so here we have Mercury, Project Mercury, that came first. So those were the um, single manned operations and these are the rockets that took people there. Also um, in green, as we're going along, those are the Soviet equivalents to that, since both 
um, the Soviet Union and hmm. America were working on it at the same time. Well. Then next we have Project Gemini, uh, aptly named because that were those were two astronauts who um, were in there. So they were way up there in the capsule. And above our heads, we have a film prop of a, an exact scale model of a Gemini capsule. So imagine being out in space in that and re-entering Earth's atmosphere in that. I could not imagine that, but it apparently has happened. That's amazing. It it's small. Happened. It's really tiny. Wow. Um, then finally, we get to Saturn V. Uh, which is that huge one up there. Wow. Um, and these are all labeled with uh, like command module as up at top, the service module, and different parts of that. Um, what I think is really amazing is in space, these astronauts would have to detach from the service module. The command module is where they're sitting. They would have to detach, flip around, and connect the other way to the service module before then going wow. to the moon. Wow. Okay. And then last, we have behemoths. Yes. Again, these are, these are more um, Saturn V's, the Apollo yeah. rocket, and then, again, the Soviet equivalent. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Really cool. And then we have another suit over here. This I just caught my... This is the first space suit. Oh, the first yeah. space yeah. suit. Yeah, this is a cosmonaut space suit. So from USSR, noticeable for its orange color. This was the type worn by Yuri Gagarin, who was the first human in space. Wow. Now, is this a, do you know if this is a replica or if this is the actual suit? Um, it, it was not Yuri Gagarin's suit, so, so it, it's a replica. Wow. But still, really neat to see. Yeah. This exhibit has, is just really, really neat. So again, uh, as we walk through here, this opens on Saturday at the Henry Ford. We're just giving you guys a... A preview of it uh, mm -hmm. runs through May 8th. I finally got the date right, I think. You got it right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you got it. Uh, now we're getting, this looks like uh, some, a lot of the news and, and politics maybe yeah. of yeah. the space race, I guess. Looking uh, back, we have a tendency to think about the space race as almost separate from other things that were going on in the 1960s. But it was, in fact, very much embedded. In, um, in that culture, and there was so much change happening with the civil rights movement, the counterculture, Vietnam, um, and there was some resistance from many Americans to going to space. Um, now, the objective of doing that was to beat the Russians to the moon, um, because for a while there, they, uh, they had had the first satellite, they had had the first person in space, and they were ahead, and so it took a really um, directed effort to get to the moon. Um, but at the same time, so much was going on socially, so those same discussions that we have today with spaceflight and the cost of it, and could that money be better used on Earth, that was going on in the 60s too. Wow, very neat. So yeah, you guys get a little history of what was going on during the space race, all the, you know, a lot of major events. There's, uh, of course, JFK. Yeah, and uh, by the way, if you didn't know, here at the Henry Ford, uh, the vehicle, the presidential limo in which uh, JFK was assassinated in, the home of that vehicle is right here at the Henry Ford Museum. We have showed you that before, but if you have never seen it, come to the museum. You have a, a, a line of oh, a historic presidential limos, and the JFK uh, limo where he, in which he was assassinated in is here at the Henry Ford in Dearborn, let's continue. Uh, we're nearing the beginning as we've given you just a little taste, small taste of the exhibition. We, we just wanted to show a little bit of it. Uh, obviously, there's a lot you can read, a lot you can watch. You've seen a lot of TV monitors. There's a lot going on. Uh, you know, you could spend a good hour here, it looks like, and uh, yeah, soak in a lot of things. Definitely. So. Yep, we have some immersive experiences. We have a lot of great content if you're interested in history. That's one thing we like about this space exhibit um, is that many space exhibits are, are very science focused and they're great, but as a fit for the Henry Ford, this one is rooted in history. Yeah, I love history, it's great. And uh, so here we have... Uh, these are, this is about the design of the rockets that took us to space and an, an office in which they, they may have been <laughs> discussed early on. <clears throat> early on in that process. Look at that phone right there. Oh, check yes. out this check out this phone. 
might have been used to make a call saying, let's go to space tomorrow, or <laughs> let's, let's do it, or who knows what they said. It's a great reminder of the technology that was available yeah. at that time and how the space program really advanced that. Um, now, there are myths out there about like that um, NASA invented Tang. They did not. <laughs> But there were a lot of things that they brought brand recognition to. Um, computer chips, as we would call them today, they would call them integrated circuits. That was a technology that existed at that time, but the amount of uh, funding that was being put towards their use for NASA drove the price way down, and so that enabled their more widespread use in other technologies. Okay. Very neat. All right, we're wrapping up here as we're getting now to the beginning of the exhibition because we started again at the end because that lunar module was there and I had to sit in it. You know, That's I mean, great. I had to start there. So um, we're getting to the beginning here. So this is the unmanned space flight section, um, and if you want to. Uh, take a look at that. That was our first successful satellite. Oh wow! Yep, that happened in um, in the late fifties. Explorer one, and then we have a model over here of how that was carried into space. On the right, the white one. You can see up at the top. That's the satellite. The rest of it is the rocket to get it out into space. Oh yeah. Um, it was on a Jupiter rocket, and then to the left is what launched Sputnik, which was the first um, man-made satellite. Wow. And we have a Sputnik model up there. That is the, the exact size of Sputnik. So that's the, that's, wow, oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Exact model, wow, Sputnik, really neat.